Hello and welcome to the Matthias iOS Development Show with me, Matthias, your iOS developer. And today we're gonna make a simple app which does a simple API call and displays us some data in SwiftUI, of course. Now, uh, API calls, uh, that's, that's what your app is probably going to be built around. And this is just gonna be a simple example of going through the, the most simple way, I wanna say, of getting this done, or the most straightforward, let's call it straightforward. And if you get this done, then you can build your app from this and your system from this, and you understand, oh, this is how we can actually access the data from other sources. So I made us here a nice empty example app with a nice hello world text. And what we're gonna use is the API of Swift and Fire, uh, of Ice and Fire. Huh. So what this one does is uh, it gives us access to lots of Game of Thrones houses and characters. And uh, we're just gonna use this example call they have here for character number 583, which is Jon Snow. And this is what we'll get from my API call. And as JSONs looks like this, and we're gonna take some data of this, not everything. Uh, we we wanna keep this one simple. <clears throat> we're gonna get some data of this and display it in our app. So we go back to our app. And first what we need is a class or a struct to, to contain all the data. So let's just make one. This is all gonna be in one file for, for, for uh, display purposes. If you make it yourself, of course, it's much more, makes much more sense to put it in multiple files. So we're gonna say struct character codable. The codable part is important. That one always needs to be here. And let's add the name. And what else we got? When the character was born. And the culture of the character. And if we go back to our data reply, this is what we got. We got name, culture, and born. Of course, we can add more stuff later if you want to and display it accordingly. Let's let's start simple and get the easiest way done that we can do this. And uh, now we need to call this. Now we need some way to actually call our um, API online and get the data from there. So I'm gonna create a class API underneath this. Let's zoom in a bit. Class API. And this one will get the function public func character. And uh, so the URL, URL is gonna be hard coded in this, but what's gonna be important is the completion, which is the part that escapes, is escaping from the function and then returns us actually the object which we want. And the signature for this would look like, so we say character and we give a completion parameter with an escaping completion that says character, um, we get, we get a character returned from this. And um, now we're gonna put our guard in to make sure the URL works. Yeah, come on, URL string. And we're gonna grab our thing here. Mm -hmm. Else return, no. So this makes basically sure that the URL we're putting in here is actually functioning and works as a URL. Otherwise we get an early return in the function. This needs to be capitalized. Uh, we're hard coding URL and we know that it's always going to be this one. Um, if you extend this in the future, of course, you need to know, cool, does this work or does this not work? And it also makes sense to put a URL as a parameter here in the get character function. So that of the way we need to create our request object. That is a URL. Ah, come on, request with our URL, not as a string, but, a, but as a URL object. Then we're gonna switch the method to be a get method. <clears throat> and now we'll create a URL session data task. So we're gonna say URL session, there's a singleton that exists already. Data task with our request. That's our request. And uh, now we're gonna put this data block in here. So it says data, and I'm not gonna use the other two blocks, one of which is the error. So if we wanna get an error readout, then um, you can put it also in here. But we're making the simplest version, right? We're not making a complicated one. 
and I'm just going to move this one a bit to the side. So right, in URL session, shared data task with our request, which we defined here. Uh, we get this data back. And now we need to unwrap this. So we're going to say let character equals, we're going to force try, we know this will work. JSON, no, not encoder, decoder. Out character self. So this is where we need to add in the type of the class we are decoding. From data, we also force unwrapping this one. And once that is done, we say dispatch queue main async. Do the completion with our character. And of course, once that is done, we need to actually resume everything because this is an asynchronous request. <coughs> and this one requires a semicolon. And this is pretty much it. This is the code you're going to use to access uh, an API call, uh, to access data from an API. So let's go through again what's happening. We're calling get character. We're going to put in a completion that will handle in a few minutes how we deal with the character that is back. We check if our URL actually is a functioning URL. Otherwise, if it's not if it's not working as URL, it's, there's no point in calling it. There will be an error afterwards. We create a request object. We set the request method to get. Uh, this is where we can later set more complicated stuff. If you want to make a post request or some other type, if you need to add authorization, it's it's you do it here. You add it to the request object. And then we're going to call URL session the singleton and create a data task with our request. We get the data back, assuming it works. And then we need to create our character from this data. So at this point, data will be uh, this raw JSON thing we'll get here. And the nice thing about the codable protocol, which we're implementing here with the character is, if we run a JSON decoder over this with a character self, it'll automatically get everything in here that overlaps with what we got in our JSON data and will automatically create a create an object out of this. Codable is so amazing, seriously. Uh, you'll not get around using it. And you can see already, we're just getting these three values. We are not getting, we're not getting really uh, everything in there. So um, this is super useful, for example, if, if uh, the data you get, um, the call you get is, is more than you actually need. For example, for another implementation, like if, if you get, if you, if you use the same API for a website, maybe it uses some other data, which you don't need for an app. That is totally fine. And here we say JSON decoder decode this by the character codable system from the data. And then we're going to say in the dispatch queue, this is an asynchronous operation. So it might take a bit, it might take some cycles, some milliseconds, half a second for us to actually get the data from the API. This is why it's got to be an asynchronous operation. And we're going to say completion with the character we just did. And uh, now we got to figure out how to put this into the actual Swift UI call. So we're going to give this one doo -doo -doo, a variable that says, let me get my notes here ready. There it is, state var character. And that is a character that can be a nil. Why is this important? Uh, because when we load the thing, this this data doesn't exist yet. So we need to make sure. Okay, this can be this can be nil. And on the body, we then say on appear. And here we can put our code that calls the get character stuff. So we're gonna say <clears throat> on appear API get character. And uh, we're gonna add the completion here. I'm gonna make it the other way, which I prefer. The character we get in, no, I said in. In, and then we say self character equals the new character. So what's happening here? We load the app, the text hello world appears, and then we run this code, which says API get our character. We go through all of this here. We get a character back if it works out fine. And then we assign the character we got to our locally saved character here. Uh, so let's try this out. I'm going to put a breakpoint in here and just run this app and see what we get back from there.
So simulator starting. Cool, hello world appeared. And we can immediately see our breakpoint. Hey, it succeeded, we got the character. And uh, if we open this one up here in the debug view, in the debugger, we can see, cool, we got a name variable. It says Jon Snow, it says born in 283AC of the Northman culture. Nice, so this works. So at this point, we basically have this character here in this variable. So now we can work on getting the data from this variable into the view. And what I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a, no, a new body function, basically, I'm gonna call it loader which is a nice pattern I discovered recently. And um, we're gonna just put this thing in here. So here we can have more detailed stuff. And what we're gonna do in here is uh, we need to return something so nothing is happening. We're gonna say if let unripped character. So only if the character exists, we're gonna do the thing. We're gonna return an any view. And for now, this is going to be a text. World. And else. <clears throat> We're going to return also in any view with a text that says loading. Now, uh, what is happening here? We are, let me make this a bit nicer. So in the view we built, where the character can be no, we got to deal with the possibility that the character doesn't exist. So when we try to unwrap it from the null, and this works, then we're going to show the character data in here. If this doesn't work, we can show a loading view. Now this is just a loading text, and I made another video recently about how to make a skeleton loading view. So if you want to check it out, how to make it better, um, check go there and see how, how to do it. And uh, we got to cast this into an any view. Any view means um, if, uh, if, a, if, a, if a variable, if a Swift UI view variable has different return types within it based on conditions, that won't work. So these need always to be the same return type. And if they can be different, right, we're gonna put an any view around them, which basically makes sure, okay, it's always, it's always of the class any view, it'll, it'll work fine. Right now, this is both texts. So this is fine, but we're gonna change this one here to actually show us the data. So we're gonna be putting a vstack here instead. And we're gonna make a bunch of other texts. Just copy those out here. And this is where we can put in our data from the character. So we're gonna say character name. Oh no, the unwrapped character. That's this one we have. And then we're gonna say when the character was born. And this one here, where the character born. And also what culture the character is from. And let's run it and see what happens. Hey, check it out. Now we have here our character view. It says Jon Snow born in 283 AC of the Northman culture which is the same data we have in this API here. And that's pretty much it. This is how you make a simple API call in Swift and Swift UI. Now, uh, this, is fairly, this is fairly simplistic. This is just the easiest way of doing this. Of course, uh, this can be extended, right? So um, as I mentioned before, this URL, for example, this shouldn't be really hard coded. Uh, or rather, if you have a get character function, then you can put this URL like as a parameter and make this more elegant. The actual fetching can also be uh, used with generics. So it doesn't always have to be a character. You can add the type of the generic yourself. This doesn't do error handling at all for now. So this assumed it works out. And uh, for example, if you use this one in a room with bad reception, it probably might not work. It might time out. And in that situation, we will always have, which is actually a nice thing, we will always have the loading text because this one fails gracefully. Since we start with the character being nil, if it does, if it if it never turns uh, into an actual character because the request failed or the connection was bad, it always will say loading instead of you know crashing and saying system error twenty three in big bold red text. 
so, so this loader, st loader struct, what's the word I'm looking for? Loader pattern is actually pretty useful in that regard. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Looking forward to seeing your own results with your own experimentations. Uh, don't, forget, don't forget to press the like and subscribe button and I'll see you next time.